fresh out the box. Stop, look and watch. Ready yet? Get set. It's the 359 Podcast. I'm BVG. And here in the seats, we have the classics, the OGs. <laughs> we got Roger Chang and Ben Fox Rubin, and we are finally back at full steam. Yeah. I'm I'm still taking it in. Like Hi. I've been I've been in LA for three weeks. So we changed things while you were things away. Things were changed, yes. I, I look I look a lot better on camera now. Right? No? Um, no. No? No. Yeah, all right. No, but people people can see more of the blemishes all over your face. <laughs> well, there's that at least. You're welcome, audience, for all that. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, budget phones, whether or not you should give up your iPhone for a, uh, a cheaper Android phone. Is it worth it? It might be. It might be. Considering how much the I- the next iPhone is going to cost. Right, and we'll, we'll break down the uh, Tesla Model 3, which just rolled off and... As consumers, best we can. As best we can. We're consumers, not auto people. Right. And uh, consumers are just getting it. I don't think we've gotten the full review yet, but um, you know, Tim Stevens is taking a look at it. Uh, is very, very pleased with it so far. Mm-hmm. But it's a Tesla, right? Yeah. I so, mean, what's not to like? They're, they're kind of awesome. Especially this one's $35,000. So as always- They do a good product launch. Sorry about that. Go as, ahead. As always, if you have any questions about either of these topics, leave them in the comment section. Brian will pick out the best. And we'll get to them in three minutes and 59 seconds. From three to... Welcome to the 359. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. So, we're finally back after a bit of a pseudo hiatus. Um, we, were, we were back. Well, I was we were, back last week, man. Kind of. We took I was a break on Thursday. Doing it without you. All right. Uh, but we're, we're going to be talking about uh, Tesla 3. We're, we're going to be talking about, sorry, Tesla Model 3. Before that, we'll be talking about... Uh, budget phones mm-hmm. and whether or not you should give up your crazy expensive iPhone for a budget Android phone. Which the crazy expensive iPhone is expected to get even crazier and more expensive. Right, so right. Apple is expected to cram all sorts of new tech into its 10th anniversary iPhone, but with it, the price is expected to go above a thousand dollars. I saw it could go above fourteen hundred dollars. So that makes these budget and, phones and more a, valuable just to consider. A bit of context there, like the starting price for an iPhone right now is six hundred and fifty dollars. It's already fairly expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not including taxes. That's not including whatever service charges. Um, and yeah, the the new iPhone X, iPhone eight, whatever could go to a thousand fourteen hundred dollars depending on your configuration, uh, which. You know, all of a sudden makes a lot of these Android phones seem a lot more attractive. We're not talking about the high end guys, right? We're not talking about the, the Moto Zs or the, the Galaxy S8s. We're talking about the Moto G5 Plus or the Moto E4. These are phones that are closer to $300 to $130. Phones I've barely heard of. Right. One of these is plastic. What is it? The E4 is a plastic phone? It's like retro. It's retro. Plastic. Right. It's not going to break when you drop it, which is nice. There is that. Yeah. Um, but no, so look. Uh, one of our columnists, Rick Broida, you know, temporarily gave up his iPhone for a one hundred eighty dollar Android phone. It's the Nokia Six. I think it's one hundred eighty dollars through Amazon's discount program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, he said there are shortcomings, but you can actually live with this phone. I mean, there you know, there's some sacrifices you make, but you know, it's it's they're not that bad. Right. So would you consider? I'm just curious. Would you consider, you know, taking that big plunge into Android world? Uh. God, it's especially if your kids start asking for phones. Yeah, well, they're definitely getting a budget phone like this because it's probably going to get dropped in the toilet a few times. But I think it really depends how much the iPhone price is going to be. It's also the expectation of there are going to be three different kinds and the ultra premium one I probably wouldn't be on the market for. Uh, But at the same time, Samsung is doing a really good job where like instead of not only switching over to the Android world, but switching over from the flagship world. Yep. You know, if I was really going to switch to Android, I, w- I would probably stick with like a Samsung Galaxy S8 or something Got like it. that and get some of the, like the next, you know, the hot feeds and speeds. Right. That kind so of thing. Our, our reviews editor, Patrick Holland, you know, broke down the, the two budget Moto phones are out there. You're really looking for one that's got kind of a premium feel to it. Actually, the, the G5 Plus is not a bad option. Uh, but if you want to save money, the E4 is definitely the budget phone to beat. Uh, and then next up, we've got the Tesla Model 3. Yeah, this was this was like the big hotness that happened over the weekend that uh, Elon Musk pre- started to send out was the first runs of the Model 3. So now they're here, $35,000 uh, electric vehicle. Which is actually a good price considering past Tesla vehicles have been much Way pricier. more, yeah, yeah. Yep. 67000 plus whatever. Yep. So 
we did um uh our the roadshow folks uh put together a, a pretty good comparison as far as putting this up against the chevy bolt uh which is also uh, an electric vehicle mm -hmm. and uh, the bolt is a little bit more expensive as a base model it's around like 37.5 instead of 35 top speed is a little bit slower than the tesla model 3 it's also a little bit smaller but the range is a little bit better. You get about 238 miles per charge versus 220. Um, as you would expect, the zero to 60 is better with the Tesla Model 3. Sure. The big question for me, okay, so like I went through a bunch of those specs, fine. The question is, is like, is the Model 3 really gonna get a lot of people to jump on board to electric vehicles? Mm. I think the price is still prohibitive for yeah. most people. I know that it gets you closer into like the, you know, middle class market, but yep. it's it's going to be a tough sell for most folks. Yeah, and there are, I mean you you're marketing to people who again need to have access to a an outlet that they can plug their car into, which seems like a simple thing, but it that's not something that everyone has yet, right? Like, yeah, I guess you having, can't park it. It's a good point. You can't park it on the street. No, nope, you can't. You need a garage, which exactly. not everybody has. And you need a garage with a power hookup. Like I have a garage in my apartment complex. There's no outlet. I can I couldn't plug in a Tesla there. Yeah. So, so I still not sure if this is really going to make the big transition to electric vehicles. But I mean, I we'll think it, I think it's going to go a lot longer way than past Tesla vehicles for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the, the price is attractive. I know there are p plenty of people who are really excited about this. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of actually making it turning it into a mainstream thing, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. So, all right. If you if you liked anything, whoa, sorry. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was it. Basically, um, I completely forgot how we ended this. Thing. Oh, I'll do it for do you. Then. End it for me, dude. Yeah. If if you liked any of these stories, check them out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Roger Chang. Thanks for listening. Well, we'll just cut out that part. <laughs> no, let's keep it. Let's keep it. It's very endearing. Uh, I kind of like. Forgot how we ended the show. Like, I was going to end it the way we You don't end. say. Yeah. Also, I'm mad at both of you for not getting my uh, intro reference. Uh, Sorry. Dead air. What? What was well, the reference? It was the intro to the TV show All That with a song by TLC. Ooh. Wow. That uh, is, that's a deep cut right there, man. Yeah, I was. I don't know. That. Um, YouTube, help me out. <laughs> I was. Kind of trying to place it in the middle, and then like the podcast began, and I forgot about it. Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right, it was a nice intro. I so appreciate we must it. have ran way over four minutes because I realized I was looking around oh, for a we, clock, um, and I'm like, yeah, we got rid of the clock <gasps> while you were gone. What? It was Brian's decision. Oh my god. Yeah. So don't, are we? Don't are say we, that. Are we not doing? <laughs> it was not, my decision. Are we not doing it in three minutes and fifty nine seconds? <laughs> Uh, you should be well trained enough to do that on your own by now. We're yeah. not. Oh my God, we're let's so talk, not Let's talk script notes later. Let's get to the questions. Yeah, let's, let's get to the questions. Matthew Datcher, the Datch. That's your nickname now. Yeah. What's up, Matthew What's up, Datcher? Datch? Speaking of iPhones, is there a future to the iPhone SE? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, definitely. Yes, absolutely. They, they, I mean, it's, it's, it's one the of second their strongest. Well, just, they've already, yeah, they've already released a second iteration. You could imagine they'll have a third one. It'll, it'll essentially be unchanged, I imagine. Yeah. It'll look the same. It'll be smaller because it's going after that that customer who wants a smaller phone, but, and a cheaper phone, and a cheaper phone. Uh, but it'll have probably better specs. You know, a slightly faster processor, whatever. Yeah, all that stuff that you. you care that about. being said, uh, uh, Apple is very very interested in continually increasing its average sales price for yes. its phones. Yes. So. Um, you know, I think the question in a certain way gets at the fact that like Apple is always trying to upsell you. So uh, it doesn't really want you to get the SE. It wants <laughs> you to get like the super expensive plus, you know, limited edition, whatever, whatever this like third new iPhone is going to be They're mm -hmm. They're praying everybody buys that one, even though it'll be in probably limited quantities. Yeah. Uh, clarify before we go any further. Were you talking about the Bolt with a B? Bolt. Bolt. Bolt Not with the a B. Just to clarify. Not we the had... Volt. No. Got it. Sometimes was... laptop speakers are a little indiscerning. Okay. Yes. The Chevy Bolt, which is their... That one That one is a, like a more direct comparison, it's I would say. It's just funny because when, when you said that initially, I, I heard Volt as well. Yeah. They, they had the Volt well, It first. wasn't the way you spoke. That was I think... a stupid marketing decision on their part. They could have done a better job naming <laughs> well, no, the it, it wasn't you. It was... I think... Yeah, they, they did... I felt like they did a good job branding the Vault, but that's what I think about when I hear Bolt for some reason. I don't know. It's the Vault was first, yeah. which is why a lot of people still think Vault. Yes. But um, yeah, the next one is going to be called 
um, Smolt or something. Or <laughs> adult. Know, the adult. Dalt, the Chevy Dalt. <laughs> the Chevy Dalt. Some get cut dead in it. <laughs> so we are still on the topic of the iPhone SE, and Adam wants to know, will there, yeah. will there be 3D touch for the iPhone SE? I would say no. No. Yeah. I no. think they're going to keep that as more of like a super consumer friendly. Not just consumer friendly. They're just stripping it down. So like all the bells and whistles are on the main iPhone. And if you want that, you've got to pay up for it, right? Like, exactly. This is, yeah, this is that, a budget iPhone true. for a reason. Yeah. I mean, like it, it's gotten to the point where they're not really even adding some of the, well, this has existed since the plus existed is that they don't add a lot of those features that are in the plus into the original iPhone again, yeah. because they're trying to upsell you. Yeah. And it's interesting that a lot of the questions are about the budget iPhone SE. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious if people are willing to like switch from an iPhone to an Android, or if, like if they want to go budget, they're just looking at the SE as, as their option. Like that's a, reviewers that's a are point. out there. Like is that is that is that your budget option? Is it the SE? Because I would argue they're probably better phones on the Android side from a spec perspective. Oh, without a doubt, there's more competition. Right. So, I like think the SE you're you're kind of getting you're less. I would say you're getting less bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. Kevin points out that the Bolt and Volt both have to do with electricity. Yeah, we get that, but it's still like phonetics, yeah. <laughs> like trying to <laughs> decipher it over the crappy Volt laptop Volt. speakers on a podcast. Right. The Alt family of cars. I was Can they call one that. like the Volt uh, and the other the Zap or something? I don't know. Who Zap? I don't know. We don't Chevy do cars Zap. a lot on the show, so but like True. that's the thing is that the Model we Three. Need, yeah, we need Tim Stevens on. It's it's. We should have if, Tim on. If anything, Why haven't we had Tim on? He's he's like up he, in Buffalo. Yeah, he, well, he travels well, the world. Well, he travels every, mm-hmm. everywhere. Everywhere. He's not here. And when he comes, he, he graces he graces us with his presence for a few minutes, and right. he's off. And then he's like, like the next yeah. adventure. I think, it's, I think it's well noted, though, that even though we don't talk about cars a lot, the Model 3 was like, they, they do a really good job with product launches because, mm-hmm. I mean, they treat it like a product launch. When was the last time you saw another car company presenting a car where like you know everybody is sitting up being like oh my god the, the first run is coming out this weekend this is yeah, they're, they're yeah, really true. really good at marketing these things which is partly why we're talking about it is, is that they create a lot of excitement around them yeah you, I, yeah you don't get excited for the next camry no but i should <laughs> <laughs> have you guys found that youtube channel called regular car reviews no. no, I turned Tim, Tim on to that um, at the auto show this year, and I think I might have blown his mind a little bit. It's a fantastic YouTube channel. If anybody out there is just like into cars and you want to like get away from super high end, like the future of cars, and get into like not even a good version of the history of cars, I, I, I say that and it sounds negative because this guy's channel is incredible. It, he's going to review uh, like the Chevy Impala. And it's it sounds like such a dumb idea on paper, but it's hysterical. Hmm. And like he he'll bring in like a Yugo and crappy old models. It's it's pretty priceless. He, if you have any being like jokey or it's like I mean, he, he, is, he presents it. sincere information, but at the same time it's a little tongue in cheek. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy it and I don't know anything about cars. So I don't know. I found it enjoyable. Yeah, Just, that's uh, the- a little shout out to to uh regular car reviews. Nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing with a lot of these like everybody's car reviews is, is that it's like the latest and greatest stuff. So yep. I don't, I'm, I'm currently not in the market for a model three and I don't, I don't know that I ever will be. Maybe eventually, maybe one day. So I we myself have recently made the switch from iPhone to Android. Nice. Fair, well, it was a couple months ago, um, but I have an unfair perspective because i drowned an iphone that i had so i got kind of <laughs> a purpose uh, a throwaway <laughs> slash burner android it's the htc one and as much as the operating system android is great that phone model is a little old which which one i don't yeah. know here you tell me <laughs> did everybody get that right. reaction <laughs> right because it could be like the m9 or the m8 no, it's or not whatever the M9. I don't, yeah i don't actually even know what this is this you is got me. ancient, ancient yeah, burner phone. Cool. But I feel like I'm operating <clears throat> within the realm of the the budget phone conversation that we're having right now. Maybe not at the time when that was released, but at right. this point, it's basically kind of fresh out the box itself. 
Okay, but first of all, if you can share, how much did you spend on it? And second, do, do you miss anything from having yeah. like a flagship? Uh, I'm so it was actually a gift as someone who took sympathy on me for drowning my iPhone. Okay, being so not necessarily a, a loyal uh, Appleist, just lazy, um, and I've kind of been grandfathered in. The only thing I really miss about it is I'm still kind of getting used to the notification systems, and it's a very minor oh, detail yeah. about that operating mm-hmm. system. But there is a little bit of a. a a learning period to get used to that because it is different. Totally. But otherwise, like it does all the same damn stuff. The camera sucks because it's old, but I right. can live with that. I don't take no. Any but pictures. aren't there like aren't there little things that kind of bug you? But like with an iPhone user, you're trained to like kind of double tap your home button to kind of multitask, mm-hmm. and it's a separate button on Android. Like it's not. I don't think it's better or worse. Like they're just like little things that you remember doing in your iPhone that you try on your Android phone it like doesn't work or doesn't yeah I got used different. to that real quick though I mean those, those are tiny little I might have that weird mechanical things. because I switch between Android and iPhone constantly so I'm always like screwing myself up on like which one I'm yeah using. I can imagine that'd be weird is anybody out there in the chat constantly going back and forth between uh, iPhone and Android I'm kind of curious to see how you adjust and how your brain kind of works with that because there is a, like a very subtle kind of interpersonal mechanical yep. things that are different well, about it. Well, you find shortcuts for how you use your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, right? You find the optimal way to use it, and and then you, like, you switch the operating system, and it's just different enough that all those shortcuts are, like, worthless. So you've got to <laughs> learn all these new things. Um, the problem is if, like, you're switching in from, like, every five minutes or so, it's, it gets confusing. My brain can only handle one operating system at a time. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that your job? No, I'm... T- I'm terrible at my job. Come on. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> All right. Before we wrap it up for the day, uh, Roger, tell us about your trip. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. I introduced my wife to Harry Potter World in she, Universal Studios. No, was she no, not a about, Potter um, fan in general she's before? She's a Potter fan. She just never went to, went the, to the park. The park, yeah. What funny. about Comic-Con? Like, what was the All biggest right. takeaway I was at Comic-Con you? the week before. Right. Dang, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. We want to hear about Comic Con. Comic Con was awesome. It was uh, my first, my first Comic Con uh, in San Diego. Um, I did the Hall H line wait. That's like the thing to do if you're a hardcore fan of Comic Con. Is you attend Hall H panels because that's where all the big stuff mm-hmm. gets unveiled. You know, I got to see Steven Spielberg talk about Ready Player One and the cast of Justice League try to defend their movie and. You know, say that it's not terrible, uh, and, and ben, ben Affleck basically, you know, saying like, "I love Batman," that I, I mean, I'm not gonna quit because I guess there were rumors he was gonna quit the, the whole franchise. He's pretty good at it. I think he's pretty good he's at not it. Bad. Yeah. Um. So that 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 line was kind of crazy. Like I, I think the I was there with like a bunch of people who like kind of did it in shifts. So I ended up waiting about like nine hours to get into this. <sighs> Out of a possible that group was in line for about twenty eight hours, and wasn't even at the front of that hall. It was like they were, we were kind of stuck in like the bottom, the back quarter of the room. So the media doesn't have to wait in, there, in that so line. Comic Con is not super media friendly. So like mm-hmm. there isn't like a press line for it. You just have to go in with everyone else. So once you're in, uh, do you have to wait in the line again like the next day? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there, there are separate lines. You can't actually do it physically because uh, you'd have to have friends who kind of like wait because. Uh, for folks who wanted to get into the Saturday session, they had to start waiting at Thursday. That is nuts. Yeah, that is crazy. And Comic Con's only four days. So That's like, Comic Con culture, man. Yeah, you it's like the same you way here lose in New York. two or three days, like just walking the floor, going to other panels, just sitting in line. That sounds horrible. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I I actually had fun waiting in line because I got to meet a whole bunch of people, mm-hmm. and everyone's you know, and everyone has very common interests, right? You can geek out about the same kinds of things. So that was kind of cool, but yeah. it was like I and I opted for my particular shift to wait in the morning. So, like, it was actually not bad because like I couldn't imagine waiting from like any time between ten to four with the San Diego sun bearing down at yeah. you. It is it's pretty brutal. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Back into the chat, Danny Green, following up on our question, says, uh, I kind of like helping people with their Windows PCs, and then like ninety five percent of the time, I myself use Apple. It's nice to be able to like go back and forth. I know people that are so indoctrinated into it, so married into it that they, mm-hmm. they just like, oh, I don't know what to do with this thing. You can change settings. Yeah, that is basically Apple's whole business model is that they like people that are like that to stay because, sitting although, still. That, that's my, their, but my wife's the opposite, actually. Like, I give her a Mac, and she's like, "What? What's going on with this? How do you install apps? Why is everything all shiny?" Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't want to touch it. <laughs> uh, Svet says, I missed the simplicity of iMessage. Android needs to get on top of that one message service that works with uh, everyone else instead of trying to remember which user is on which account. I mean, mm. Use WhatsApp. That's, That's not, true. It solves you your could. problem right there. Go third party. Yeah. yeah, but there's no like, is WhatsApp like really like the Venmo of messaging services? Is Venmo the Venmo, Venmo is like of... the like the ubiquitous payment service. So like everybody's already but on. But not it everyone is on extent. Venmo. That's a terrible analogy. Really? Yeah. All right. I rescind my analogy. I, like I, I would say my my parents are on WhatsApp, but they're not on Venmo. Okay. Well, we'll get on your parents. Venmo they, is they like they owe me the money. The problem is Venmo is it's like for like cool people. No, it's not. Know. It's no. like younger folks. The, <laughs> the younger, the, the youths. youths. Yeah. <laughs> right? The, the youths that want to talk about their money for some reason. The youths of America. I still hate that are idea. all on Venmo. You know? I, I mean, I, no, I like it because I like posting weird messages. You know, just sort of like, thanks for the, thanks for helping me with that dead body or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, but but five dollars. When is Venmo? When be. is Venmo going to be called in as evidence, just like Amazon Echo is? I don't know. I think it's already been used. I, I oh. think Alfred told me about that, or like people really? do drug deals. Yeah, and like uh. they they're like, here's your weed. <laughs> it's <laughs> really, it's like thing. really blatant. Oh my god! It's like, yeah, just you're just going right to jail. We're like not even going to have a court case. <laughs> All right, so wow. we're gonna bring it on down home. Uh, Roger, are you gonna go to New York Comic Con too? Uh, yeah, you know, I've gone, I went last year, but I went as a fan. I didn't go for yeah. CNET. Um, maybe I will, maybe I'll try to cover it, but I, we've got enough people who go to New York Comic Con that, like, I don't feel the need to weigh in. I just like to go and enjoy it. All right, myself. fine. I was going to invite you along to <gasps> hang out with me, but now you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Brian oh. has a single tear rolls down his <laughs> cheek. <laughs> All right. So before we go, one quick recap. Uh, list off those budget phones one more time for those who tuned in late. Uh, it was the Moto E4 and the Moto G5 Plus uh, that that are referenced in sort of our battle of the budget phones on CNET.com right now. Uh, Rick Broider wrote a story on his experiences with the Nokia Six or Nokia Six, uh, and that was those were it. Those yeah. were the three budget phones that we're talking about. And there then are on Wednesday, we talked about the Moto Z2. Force. So we've right. been talking a lot about Moto, which right is a right? high-end phone, and and there are other budget phones. Obviously, OnePlus makes excellent uh, budget phones. Xiaomi, if you live in China, um, so you know. Right now, we we're focusing on the Moto phones because they happen to be out, and uh, but there are plenty of other options out there. And as always, check out in the uh, show notes when this episode goes up on demand. We'll have links out to those articles, including the Tesla. Uh, in a t- Tesla Top 5 video they did about Ooh. the features on the uh, Model 3. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. We're finally back in the game. Yeah. Do you want me to do the out? Yeah, go out- for it. Exit? I forgot how to do it. <laughs> All right. And and Brian got rid of the little script over there. All no! right. Here we go. Oh, there it is. It's over All there. Right. I'll do it anyway. All do right. it. The do 359 it. is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, they Feed need Burner, a script to Google do Play this. Music. Why do they need a script to do this? I don't understand at all. And of course, on CNET.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you. We'll be back tomorrow. We're sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>